So we've crossed the halfway point in the AZ500 exam cram series, and you know my mission here is to help you get further faster, so with that in mind, let's get to it. Welcome back. We're part three of the AZ500 exam cram series, and today we're talking about domain three in the skills tested for the Microsoft AZ500 exam, and that is manage security operations. So we have four subdomains here. So there's monitor security using Azure Monitor, monitor security using Azure Security Center, and monitor security by using Azure Sentinel. So three flagship services. And then configuring security policy. So you can already guess that Azure Policy is going to factor here. And uh, if I'm predicting anything here and predicting that Azure Security Center and Azure Sentinel are going to take up a lot of space in this exam. So we know what the weightings are for the different domains. We don't know exactly how much content is dedicated to the individual line items beneath. But Azure Sentinel came into the uh, picture in force in the July update, the July 2020 update to the exam. And Azure Security Center has been expanding in its functionality for quite a long time. Uh, at this point, if you've watched parts one and two, you know the goals of this exam cram series. And the short answer is to help you get further, faster in your prep, so your recall is better on exam day when it counts. So let's get to it. And remember, anytime you see for the exam, what you're going to find on the right-hand side will be one of two things, a fact you need to remember or a topic you need to study as you're preparing. And I'm going to try to help you prioritize based on those skills tested and some of those uh, core assumptions that we can make very safely, uh, I believe, with regards to where the focus will lie. So subdomain one is to monitor security by using Azure Monitor, and this is fairly short. Uh, create and customize alerts, monitor security logs by using Azure Monitor, and to configure diagnostic logging and log retention. When I think of, of security logs, I, I don't even think of Azure Monitor because I think of Azure Security Center and Azure Sentinel as you know, the security-focused services where I'm going to be doing a lot of that, that type of work. But uh, for the exam, make sure you know your way around Azure Monitor. So let's talk about a little bit of exam focus here where Azure Monitor is concerned. So with regards to alerting, know what action groups are and how to configure and use action groups. So if you don't have a lot of experience with Azure Monitor, go to the AZ500 exam prep guide, and there's a tutorial you can walk through uh, on the Microsoft site that will help you with configuring an alert and tuning an alert. So when it comes to alert rules, it's uh, worth noting how you handle suppression so you don't get lots of unwanted and duplicate alerts. Now since the scope is security, know where to configure event collection for your, your VMs for sure. And I, I would say just generally speaking, know how to configure diagnostic logging across all the PaaS and IS services. I think that's uh, knowledge worth having. Uh, in the in the real world as well as for the exam, uh, for that matter. So subdomain two, monitor security by using Azure Security Center. I think this is going to be a big one uh, on the exam. Uh, you can expect that. And so evaluating uh, vulnerability scans from Azure Security Center. Vulnerability scans in this context, we're talking about uh, virtual machines. And configuring just-in-time VM access using Azure Security Center. So that's uh, allowing uh, some control over remote admin access through, through time-limited activation. Uh, configuring centralized policy management using Azure Security Center. So uh, there's so much focus that goes into seeing the convenient and prioritized recommendations from Security Center. I don't think uh, everybody is fully aware of the policy element of Azure Security Center. And I want to make sure that you have an understanding of the, the policy elements that you want to focus on there. So I think I'm just going to show you uh, today so you, you know where to go look and spend a little bit of time. And then configuring compliance policies and, and evaluating compliance using Azure Security Center. So think regulatory compliance. And if you have a passing familiarity with Azure Security Center, you might say, well, there's four, you know, three or four standards that you noticed out there. There are four uh, regulatory compliance standards that are on by default that you see in the dashboard. Uh, I want to show you a bit more uh, about what is behind the scenes that maybe you've never looked at before, just to be sure, because I think Security Center is going to be 
one of those areas that will get uh, pretty heavy focus on AZ500 uh, for most people. So know where to find default the default policy that controls Azure Security Center settings out of the box. Uh, know how to customize the uh, standards in the, the regulatory compliance dashboard. Uh, know how to enable predefined regulatory compliance standards. And you might ask, well, Pete, what do you mean predefined regulatory compliance standards? Well, you see four standards in the dashboard uh, by default. There are seven or eight more that you don't see uh, because they're not added by default. So I'll show you where you find those. And know how to add your own custom policies, what we'd call a custom initiative so let's just stop for a moment. I want to have a look at Azure Security Center with you. So I'm looking at my overview screen here. And what I'll do is just go down the list and under policy and compliance, I'm going to go right to security policy. So I can just show you where you need to look. And then I'll go under my subscription here. So I'm just looking at one of my lab subscriptions. View effective policy. This is the default policy that controls settings. So get in here, have a look at the default policy, know that you can change these default settings. And remember I mentioned those pre-built or, or existing regulatory standards. So there are the core four that you see enabled by default. Check out what happens when I click on add more standards. So there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven more, including standards like uh, uh, HIPAA high trust, SWIFT, so banking standards. Uh, some Canadian and UK uh, standards, NIST, so so some fairly well-recognized industry standards here, so definitely all things you want to be familiar with. And then when you want to create your own custom initiative, which will show up under custom on the dashboard, you can add a custom initiative. And you'll want to know what a custom initiative is, uh, by the by, a collection of policies designed for a uh, specific goal or purpose. So, so an initiative is a collection of Azure policy definitions, if you weren't already familiar. Um, so you want to know the vulnerability scanning feature for Azure VM. So like the uh, container image vulnerability scan we talked about yesterday, it uses Qualys under the hood. And the vulnerability scanning for, for Azure VMs is actually uh, free. It's part of the solution. Uh, the Qualys component is in there. The results are surfaced right there in your dashboard. And when you um, have Azure VMs where you haven't configured the vulnerability scan, there's actually a quick fix solution that will come up. So you can enable that with just a click or two, you know, quickly and easily. Uh, know that this will also do some scanning of your, your uh, SQL instances in your VMs as well. Know how to configure just-in-time VM access, which uh, does some magic with your network security groups in the background. And yesterday, you'll recall when we talked about Azure Bastion, I mentioned that you need to know the answer to that question about, uh, you know, what do we do with just-in-time VM access and Azure Bastion uh, together? Should we be using those together or should we not? So go do that search I mentioned in part two and, and see exactly what we talked about yesterday. Uh, but you want to know how to configure just-in-time VM access and understand uh, what changes happen with your network security groups when you do that. If you go look at my uh, LinkedIn Learning uh, AZ500 series, I walk through just-in-time VM access in detail in the console and I show you what happens in those network security groups. Again, uh, if you don't have access to LinkedIn Learning, uh, you can reach out to me for a trial and I'm happy to accommodate as long as I have trials. And when I don't have trials, I can typically go get at least a few. So if you're getting value from this video, do make sure to give us a like and subscribe. Uh, you'll be notified that way every time we add a new Azure tutorial or exam prep video here. And although it's not mentioned specifically, Know how to enable advanced threat protection, which is a, a feature unlocked with the standard tier of Azure Security Center. And you can enable advanced threat protection at the subscription level or at the resource level, like, like for a SQL instance, for example. So make sure you know your way around that. There's not you know, heavy configuration. It's largely flipping a switch, but have an awareness there just in case it comes up. Uh, that AZ500 exam prep guide I mentioned where I have additional links to reading and some of the tutorials I mentioned in this series 
Uh, there's the URL. Go grab it. It's free and also designed to help you prepare more quickly and effectively. So, subdomain 3, monitor security by using Azure Sentinel. So we saw Azure Sentinel come on the scene uh, from an AZ500 uh, exam perspective in the July update really in, in force. And so here we have create and customize alerts, configuring data sources for Azure Sentinel evaluate results from Azure Sentinel, and then configuring workflow automation uh, with Azure Sentinel. Um, and workflow automation is a phrase that we heard in Azure Security Center as the playbook feature left Security Center and moved into Azure Sentinel. And uh, at the end of the day, that's all about building automated response. Uh, so for the exam around Azure Sentinel, um, Knowing how to configure and, and tune how to configure and tune alerts in Azure Sentinel, I believe, will be important. Take a trip through the data sources. So Azure Sentinel is this center of visibility from a security perspective, and it can consume data from several dozen sources. And many of these connectors, these data sources, are very easy to configure. Uh, you know, for example, consuming Azure AD. Uh, Sign-in logs or authentication logs is really just the flip of a switch. Uh, but then you have uh, data sources like syslog, common event format, or third-party appliances. The configurations there will vary. Uh, I'm not saying you need to touch every one of them hands-on, but have an awareness of how these data sources are configured because that's how you make Sentinel work. Um, and know how to configure both the built-in and, and custom analytics analytic rules uh, because, because your ability to tune these will vary. So how you can tune custom rules versus some of the built-in where we're forwarding alerts and turning alerts from other services. When we're turning alerts into incidents, when we're taking an, an alert from one service and turning it into an incident in Sentinel, our ability to tune, uh, uh, suppress, you know, to remove duplicates is less. I have a suggestion for you here, though. I, I really believe that if you haven't spent time with Azure Sentinel, spin up an Azure Sentinel trial, walk through the onboarding tutorial, link in the exam prep guide, spend some time with the instant with the incident investigations feature. Know your way around um, probing the entities. Uh, you know the right click context to make additional queries. Knowing your way around that interface, I think, makes pretty good sense. Uh, I, I think we have a good sense that, that Sentinel is going to, uh, to see some real airtime on the AZ500 exam. So, so subdomain four is configure security policies. So configuring security settings using Azure policy, configure security settings using Azure Blueprint. So this is another uh, phrase you're going to want to be very familiar with, and I'll give you a clue as to not only what it's for, but when you can can expect that Azure Blueprint is actually the answer on a question. And then configure a playbook using Azure Sentinel. So playbook are those uh, security-focused logic apps that help us to automate response to alerts in Azure Sentinel. So for the exam, be familiar with Azure Policy and Azure Blueprint. Know the difference between these three items, a policy, an initiative, and a blueprint. And just to, to recap for you here, a policy is what we use to enforce different rules and effects over our resources so those resources remain compliant with our IT governance standards. And an initiative is a collection of Azure policy definitions that are grouped together towards a specific purpose. Uh, a, a blueprint is a slightly different animal. So a blueprint is a, a declarative way to orchestrate deployment of various resource templates and artifacts, like your role assignments, your policy assignments, your ARM templates, even resource groups. So you will frequently hear of a blueprint as a way to standardize new environments. So, so often you're going to see the, the word environment or environments uh, in the same sentence with uh, Azure Blueprints. So, so keep an eye out. Uh, and just remember that terminology association. Uh, 
know the triggers for the playbooks feature in Azure Sentinel because what you have there with with playbooks are logic apps that have specialized triggers for Azure Sentinel. So that's that's the scoping uh, of the uh, the logic apps, so to speak. And that is domain three. So remember to take a look at the, at the uh, Azure security engineer learning track over on LinkedIn Learning with uh, installments for every AZ500 exam domain. And thanks again for watching. And I will see you back here for part four of the AZ500 exam cram series tomorrow.